Let's move on now to differentiation. A scalar field depends on several variables. If there is one holistic idea of the derivative for all the variables simultaneously, well, I'll leave that aside for now. But the most immediate generalization of the derivative is to, to, to do the derivatives in each variable independently. This is called partial differentiation. To take a partial derivative of a scalar field, I choose one variable, and I pretend that all the other variables are constant. And then I just take a normal single variable derivative in the chosen variable. The Leibniz notation for the single variable derivative of f of x is df over dx. This notation is very useful to generalize because it names the variable in the denominator. The most common notation for a partial derivative is this Leibniz notation, but with the d's stylized this way. The partial derivative, in brief, the partial, of f in x is this, which I speak as del f over del x, or just del f del x. The partial in y is del f del y, and the partial in z is del f del z. And the partial in some other variable, xi, is del f del xi. This is, however, not the only notation. In addition to this notation, various places in mathematics have a variety of other notations. A subscript variable means a partial derivative, so this f subscript x is also a partial. This del subscript x is another means to take a partial derivative in the variable x. And finally, instead of a stylized d, I can also use a capital D to indicate a partial. Of these notations, I'll use the first two quite frequently. There is a formal definition of this derivative, but it is really the same limit definition as the single variable derivative. So you can notice that the plus h shows up in the particular coordinate place to match. The plus h on x for the partial derivative in x, and the plus h on y for the partial derivative in y. Since we already know how to take single variable derivatives, I'm not going to dwell on this formal limit definition, but it is good to know that it exists. So, here are some examples. This is a scalar field. Its partial in x comes from treating y as a constant. So the y squared just remains as a constant in front of the sine x derivative. Its partial in y treats x as a constant, which means that the x squared term is entirely constant and has derivative 0 in y. The sine x term is also constant and just remains multiplied by the derivative of y squared. Here is another example. The x derivative here can treat 1 over y as a constant. And taking the derivative of 1 over x to get negative 1 over x squared and combining with that constant, the first part of this expression gives you negative 1 over x squared y. In the second component, I need the chain rule. The x derivative of the inside piece of the chain rule here is the constant y, so that gets multiplied by the exponential. And then both of these are reversed for the y derivative. So you get y squared in the denominator in the first place term, and x multiplied by the second term due to the chain rule. The derivatives can, of course, get quite complicated. Here are the partials of a rational function. And for each of the, these, I have to use the quotient rule. And you can see the pieces here. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the top divided by the bottom squared. For derivatives like this, I am very happy if you ask a computer algebra system to do them for you. A single variable function was called differentiable if its derivative existed. Here, there are now several derivatives, the partials. So a scalar field is differentiable at a point if all of its partials exist at that point. If the partials in even one variable fail, then the function is not differentiable. Since partials are just single variable derivatives while pretending that the other variables are constant, I can do higher derivatives the same way, taking two or three or four derivatives while I pretend that the other variables are constant. Using Leibniz notation, I indicate this with exponents on the derivatives, as I did for single variable derivatives. However, something new is that I can do mixed higher partial derivatives. I can pretend that x is constant and differentiate in y, and then, taking that new expression, I can switch to pretending that y is constant and differentiate in x. The notation for a mixed partial is here. 
The numerator still shows the degree of the derivative, but the denominator shows which partials are taken in which order. In this notation, the order is right to left. The y derivative happens first, and then the x derivative. Likewise, in this notation, a degree four higher mixed derivative, the y derivative is first, then the z, then the y again, and finally the x. Here are some examples of higher partials. This is a polynomial in x and y, and I've calculated the first few unmixed higher derivatives here, and notice how they each drop the degree in the matching variable. The polynomial has degree 3 in x, but its first derivative in x has degree 2, and its second derivative in x has degree 1, and its third derivative in x is just a constant as far as x is concerned. Let me keep going with the same function. Here are yet more higher derivatives. After four derivatives in x, the derivative is zero, since this exhausts all of the degree three pieces in x. Likewise, after five derivatives in y, the higher derivative is again zero, exhausting the degree four terms in y in the polynomial. Finally, I could calculate the mixed partials of this polynomial. Here are the first two partials in x and y. Then in the fourth line here, I can take the x partial and differentiate in y. The 9y squared becomes 18y, y to the 4 becomes 4y cubed, and 2y squared becomes 4y. In the last line, I take the y partial and then I differentiate in x. And here the 6x cubed becomes 18x squared, the 4x becomes 4, and the 2x squared becomes 4x. And even though these are different processes, the results are the same. These two paths with different orders of differentiation produce the same result. Is this a coincidence? This is not a coincidence, it is a theorem. Let f be a scalar field on some domain a in Rn, and let x and y be two of the variables. Then, if all of the second partials, mixed and pure, of the function in all variables exist and are continuous, then the order of differentiation in the mixed partials doesn't matter. The derivative in y and then in x is equal to the derivative in x and then in y. This is called Clairaut's theorem. This notation in the middle here, C2, is notation that means all of the second partials exist and are continuous. This is pretty useful notation and can be generalized. A function is in class Cn. If you want to explicitly mean, name the domain, you can say Cn of A, where A is some subset of Rn. A function is in the class Cn if all of its nth partial derivatives exist and are continuous. And a function is in class C infinity if all of its higher partials to any degree exist and are continuous. A lot of results and theorems depend on the differentiability class of a function, so having a concise notation for this is quite convenient.